Stars evaporate, and this is why the universe will die much sooner than we thought. At least this is what I read in the recent headlines. I guess that's bad news for Brian Johnson because it'll be very boring for most of eternity, but good news for the rest of us as we'll not be missing out on much in these last 10 to the 1000 years. But what are these people even talking about? I've had a look. The headlines are about a new paper that was just published. When they say that stars evaporate, they don't mean that stars boil or something. They mean a quantum process like the evaporation of black holes. This was Stephen Hawking's biggest insight that black holes radiate and thereby lose mass. This radiation is now called Hawking radiation. In the new paper, they use a comparison to a related effect for the electric force. Suppose you have a big atomic nucleus with some positive charge. That'll create an electric field. The larger the charge of the nucleus, the stronger the electric field around it. Eventually, the electric field will be so strong and carry so much energy that it can create electron-positron pairs. The electron falls into the nucleus, reducing its charge. The positron escapes. This process has never been observed because the nuclei that we can create aren't large enough. But it's probably right. For the electric force, this process reduces the charge of the central body, the nucleus, in my example. In analogy for gravity, you'd produce pairs of particles and antiparticles from the gravitational field. These would be pulled apart by tidal forces and just coincidentally, occasionally, one is attracted to the center body, the other one escapes. This leads to a net loss of mass, so an evaporation. The point of the authors in the new paper is now that this doesn't need a horizon. Yes, they say, if you have a black hole, then the effect is the largest. But strictly speaking, it should happen for any object. The higher the density, the more. A solar mass black hole takes about 10 to the 67 years to evaporate. According to their calculation, a neutron star takes about four times as long, white and brown dwarfs even longer. They don't look at other stars because these will all burn out and end up as one of those four, black holes, neutron stars and white or brown dwarfs. If what they say is correct, this dramatically changes how the future of our universe is going to play out. Because currently physicists think it looks roughly like this. At the moment, our universe still has nuclear fuel and new stars form. But the new star forming period will run out in a hundred trillion years or so. Then the only thing that's left will be highly compact dead stars, brown dwarfs, white dwarfs, neutron stars and black holes, and dead planets around them. The black holes which have formed by then will evaporate. But it takes a long time until gravity collapses and clumps the remaining material. Previous estimates say something of the order of of 10 to the 1000 years or so. But here's the relevant part. If you think that all other compact dead stars also evaporate, this happens much sooner. This is why the authors of the new paper say that the universe will die faster in what they estimate to be merely 10 to the 78 years. So when the headlines say that our universe will decay or die or end much sooner, they don't actually mean the entire universe, but the remnants of stars. Once these are evaporated, there's just thinly distributed particles and darkness. However, please don't swallow this as it is, because that calculation is hugely controversial and most people I know, including myself, think it's likely wrong. The reason is that this analogy to the electric force just doesn't work. It's true that the evaporation of black holes happens because the vacuum around a black hole decays. This is similar to the example with the charged nucleus. The images you often see are somewhat misleading because the typical size of the particles is larger than the black hole itself. They're really very spread out clouds. But the origin of the radiation is indeed a change in the vacuum. However, for gravity, this only works if the space around the object changes in time. This is the case for a black hole because Hawking looked at the collapse of matter that dynamically forms a horizon. 
But you don't get an evaporation for a static, unchanging object. The same point was made by John Baez, who writes very clearly, the gravitational field of a static mass does not cause the creation of particle-antiparticle pairs. This is entirely correct. Now, strictly speaking, space around any star will constantly wobble a bit. So yes, you have a time dependence, but it's ridiculously tiny, and that'll hugely reduce the emission of stars compared to black holes. The author don't seem to take this into account, and this is why I'm quite sure that we'll soon see a bunch of replies to this paper and that the result will almost certainly not hold up. Will this urgent question be settled before the stars burn out? Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Problems. I'm sure you have a few, but problem solving is a skill that you can train, just like any other. I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.